Welcome back, fellow 3D printing and Tinkercad enthusiasts. I'm excited to announce that this is going to be the last of a series of Tinkercad tutorials. If you've gone through the other five tutorials and that's what brought you here, I'm super proud of you uh, because I know it wasn't easy. Some of them were quite long and some of it may have been mundane. But if you're here, it means you've pretty much mastered all the concepts of Tinkercad and everything it has to offer. And now we're just going to cover what to do as far as importing, exporting, sending to, and collaborating with your design. So let's start with import and see what our options are. So I'm going to hide this little squirrel guy. I actually made this back in 2014. I was supporting a friend. He was running the Iron Man and we created a little trophy for him. We'll go ahead and hide that by clicking Control H. By the way, if you need any of the shortcuts, there's a place on my website, proambitions.com forward slash Tinkercad. All of the keyboard shortcuts you can handle, as well as all the videos. We're currently filming part six. Okay, so importing. If we click import, we have two choices. We can choose a file or we can import from a URL. And Tinkercad supports STL, OBJ, and SVG. And I will cover what each of those are. What STL and OBJ are is they're actual objects that you've created in another program or you downloaded from Thingiverse, let's say, that you can import into your Tinkercad platform. So let's start by doing that. So we'll go to choose a file and we can click on downloads and I believe I've designed an MRI in the past for a project. So let's see if we can insert this STL. So we'll scale it to 200 and it shows you the different dimensions which you can adjust to be exactly to what you prefer. And when you click import, it usually takes a few seconds and what's going to happen is it will import your design regardless whether you made it on the Tinkercad platform or you made it somewhere else. This was designed on Fusion 360. Uh, it was basically an MRI toy for one of the nearby hospitals with a sliding table and it was to help kids overcome their fears of getting MRIs. So now that we see how to uh, import a solid object, I'll go ahead and delete this. And by the way, you see when I click on it, it still gives me the options to adjust various things on here. So even though this was designed on a different program, I can still make some adjustments to it. I can make it more narrow, I can make it thicker, which is really interesting. This, this wasn't the case only a couple of years ago. If you imported something, it would just have to stay the way it is. So let's go ahead and delete this design. And now let's talk about SVG. So the STL and OBJ, that's objects like similar to what I just imported. They're solid three-dimensional objects. SVG is something different. SVG is a flat image that Tinkercad allows you to extrude. Think of, you're, you're probably familiar with pictures being saved as a JPEG or PNG file. However, you have to pull up an SVG file. And I'll show you how that's done. So for instance, I wanted to find a like button that's an SVG. So I just searched for SVG like button. And then I clicked on this one. And then I went to visit the website. Because if you go here and you try to save the image as, it only allows you to save it as a PNG. And that's not what we want to do. We want to save it as an SVG. So we usually have to visit the actual website and there will be a download option where we could download this as an SVG file. So that's what I went ahead and did. And now if we go back to Tinkercad and we choose a file, we could go to our downloads and you see that I have uh, my like button SVG right here saved. So if we open that up, We'll see that the like button SVG, the icon for it, it's a small picture of what the actual looks like, appears here. And we could choose if we want to center on the artboard or the art itself. Let's go with art and let's leave the scale at 100 and import it and see what happens. So once we import it, and again, let's go to our home, home view, 
we'll be able to see it a bit better. And you'll see if you hover over the top, you're actually looking at the Facebook like button icon or the YouTube like button icon. And hopefully it's a Jedi mind trick to get you to like one of these videos or my Facebook page or anything, which you can find at Promobitions on Facebook, Instagram. And if you like this video, like it, share it, and do what you can with it. And that's essentially what um, you're able to do with the import feature in Tinkercad. Now you'll see here it says import from URL. This is because sometimes if you visit an SVG file, it'll actually give you a, a file URL that you can simply copy so you don't even have to download it to your computer, which is helpful if you're working on a library computer or somewhere where you can't save certain things. You can simply copy the link and you can paste the link here. And if you go to import, we'll see if it works or not. Okay, so sometimes it doesn't work. It's saying not a valid URL, even though it was valid. But the best and surest way to do this is to simply upload a file that's already saved to your computer. Make sure it's limited to 25 megabytes. Okay, now let's talk about exporting. So let's bring back the hidden object that we had, which we can achieve with Control shift h And we're back to seeing the squirrel the design I made in 2014 that's still amazingly on Tinkercad. It seems like Tinkercad doesn't get rid of your designs regardless how long and how far back in time you created it, which is awesome. So if we click on this and we go to export, we'll see that we have a few options here. So we can download this to our computer and if you have a few items you could click on everything in the design and simply select a few items or you can specify to include just the selected shape. Now for 3D printing you have two options. You can save it as an STL or an OBJ. Most of the 3D printers I worked on uh, is STL. However the 3D printer that you work with might prefer dot obj file so simply select obj or stl and it will start to prepare the model for export so let's go back to export so we could talk about the last option which is for laser cutting if that's something you're interested in or that's something you do then you would turn this into a dot svg file and download it that way now the other cool thing is you can navigate here to 3d print and that will bring up a couple of options. Again, the include is the same as for download. If you want to include the selected shape or everything in the design, this is where you toggle between these options. And this is very neat. This is new. It's sent to my printer. You can actually choose if one of these is your printer, you can choose one of these options. And if it's connected to your computer, it will send it directly to the program, which you need to 3D print on for your designated 3D printer. So now that we've covered export, let's see what Send2 does. So again, uh, if we click Send2, we can do a few things here. We can download locally a picture of our design. So let's say uh, I'm working on a project with another teammate and I want to download a picture and send it to him or I'm doing work for a client and I just created this trophy squirrel. I can download the picture and I could send it to them as an email, text message, however I choose, whichever platform I choose to send. Now we have an option here that we could send to Autodesk Fusion 360. I've briefly spoke about Fusion 360, which I feel is the best 3D program out there. Uh, CAD design, 3D printing, I mean, it's, it's awesome. It's very versatile. If you're into engineering or architecture, it's the ideal program for you. And it's probably the most powerful and advanced program I've come across. So as a 3D printing professional, I create most of my creations on Fusion 360. And the advantage is it's also made with Autodesk. Tinkercad uh, it has been under the Autodesk umbrella since 2013. And Fusion 360 is Autodesk's creation. So once you get really good at Tinkercad, which at this point you should be very comfortable with it, once you get enough practice, you can upload some of your designs to Fusion 360 and then perform some very advanced operations and manipulations with the design and further work on it. So you can also send your design to some of these 3D communities. 
And if you're unfamiliar with any of these, I would Google it and I would visit their website. I would take a look at what they have to offer. Uh, a lot of them are very helpful resources. Uh, for instance, Thingiverse hosts hundreds and thousands of different designs. Uh, it's an open source platform where essentially designers upload their designs and allow other CAD and 3D printing enthusiasts to use their designs uh, for free. I believe there's a restriction on selling those designs, so it's definitely important to read through the policies of the different 3D communities you're navigating. The last option is to share your design over IM or email. Now, why you would want to do this is if you want to collaborate with other people or you want to send them a link to this exact design, you can simply go to invite people and you can copy the link and share the link with a lot of different people. Now, there's another way to do this, which is you click here. It's a person symbol with a plus sign. And if you click this, you can collaborate. So you can, sh again, share the link over IM or email. And once you copy the link or you can generate a new link, you can provide that to a team member, to a client, to someone who's overseeing the project, and they can take a look at what you've done and maybe give you some helpful feedback or work on the design with you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the Tinkercad tutorial series. This was a lot. I know we've covered a lot, and it's difficult to absorb all this at once. But feel free to go through the videos as many times as you need to. I'm going to leave these tutorials up for a long time. Uh, hopefully, they won't be rendered obsolete by Tinkercad bringing in new updates and the platform should relatively stay the same so these videos should be helpful for quite some time if you found it useful I'm all about giving back so if you want to pay it forward and send the links to someone else who's learning Tinkercad uh, that would be awesome the more visibility I get on these the better uh, I hope it's a helpful resource I hope you've enjoyed it if you're into motivational entrepreneurship 3d printing web design any of that neat stuff please give promo ambitions a follow on Facebook or Instagram subscribe to the YouTube channel and keep an eye out I'm gonna be posting more tutorials uh, some motivational entrepreneurship stuff and some other stuff that I hope you find useful please use the comments section to let me know what you thought of the video if you have any suggestions if you disagree with some of the stuff I mentioned please do share that and I'm always looking for further feedback I'm always trying to learn and I hope you learned something from me and I look forward to learning something from you.